Here we go. The Constitution was written by men who believed in a God-fearing nation. Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, and a few others were deists. One of the central tenets of which is the belief that human reason was enough to solve social and political issues. That they believed in a supreme being who had created everything, but then was largely absent from human affairs and founded this country to respect religions like Christianity while in no way enforcing them upon the populace. Provides the ultimate guide on how to govern a civil society. He's gonna talk about republics to avoid the assholes in the comments who are gonna jump in and say, we're actually a republic, not a democracy. There are at least eight extant forms of republic operating in the world today. We are by no means the only or best one. There's options. Go anywhere else and they're going to tell you they're the best one too. It's nationalism, Marge. Power corrupts. The Biden administration is proof of it. Every presidential administration in this country's history has been corrupt to some degree, but Biden's administration doesn't even crack the top 10. In fact, if we want to base it solely on the number of indictments in that administration, Trump leads the way, Reagan's number two, and Nixon's number three. So you maybe want to rethink your ideas about what corruption is and who's responsible for it. It's all of them, but it's Republicans far more often. Virtually every person involved in this disturbing America last executive branch. I bet that America last line gave you the sort of thrill you normally only get from a new personal trainer you haven't cheated on your husband with. Has weaponized their office to target their political opponents. What they do like brings spurious indictment charges against people for no reason. It's unprecedented. Yeah, that's certainly never happened before in this country's history, except for like the Red Scare and Watergate and everything Reagan did. And of course, Trump doing the same thing. Totally unprecedented. I bet you think that's spelled like president, don't you? And it's not the American way. Yes, it is. You're either lying or you have no concept of the actual history of this country. We do that shit all the time. Always have. On Tuesday, I submitted articles of impeachment against the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, Matthew Graves. Mr. Graves is derelict in his duty as the Chief Prosecutor for Washington, D.C. He is in a unique position of the top law enforcement officer for both federal and local crimes, refusing to do his job. Under his watch, 67% of arrests have gone unprosecuted. Yeah, that's true. But uh, the D.C. Department of Forensic Science lost its accreditation. And so it's been very difficult for them to test suspected drugs with that being the case. And the vast majority of these unprosecuted cases are misdemeanors, low-level drug offenses. You're not really concerned about that. What you're concerned about is his willingness to prosecute those involved in January 6th. Maybe worried that he's going to take a look at a particular weird walking pipe bomb planter, Marge? It's no wonder that he is ignoring these acts that destroy the lives of residents of our nation's capital because he is solely focused on a three-hour event that happened on January 6, 2021. He is devoting his entire office to maliciously prosecuting as many people as he possibly can. With a 99.8% conviction rate, too. I must have you really sweating. I just wonder if that conviction rate is included in your negative conviction rate drop from earlier. It's like maybe a department with limited resources that has to investigate crimes in the D.C. area, but then also federally after an attempted insurrection might have its resources pressed. Maybe. Including nonviolent, peaceful protesters Graves is refusing to do his job. No, he's just refusing to do the job you want him to do, which is not the entirety of his job, Marge. He must be impeached. No, he mustn't. On Tuesday, I also submitted articles of impeachment against FBI Director Christopher Wray. Who the shit gave her articles of impeachment mad libs to fill out? Director Wray has turned the Federal Bureau of Investigation into the personal police force of Joe Biden. Nixon and Hoover. <coughs> and Attorney General Merrick Garland. It is wholly unacceptable for the FBI director or any civil officer to use their power in a way that targets one political class 
and favors another. The fact that you can stand up there doing what you're doing and make the statement against doing the exact thing. Like, are you goofy? Or, yeah, uh, you're goofy. You're goofy. Ray has used Soviet-style tactics. What do Soviet-style tactics mean, Marge? <laughs> he even sent armed agents to the home of President Donald Trump. Only after Trump had been asked quite nicely, certainly more politely than any of us would have been, to return the top secret documents that he had taken without permission that didn't belong to him. Like, they were really, really patient with him who is also the current front runner in the Republican presidential election. It would be the Republican presidential primary, Marge, not the Republican presidential election. And I know you think that because you're blonde and agree with everything he says that he'll pick you, but you're a little outside his preferred age range. He might go with Bobert though. In a politically motivated raid, to influence an upcoming election. That raid was almost a year ago and the election's like a year away. What are you talking about? All while shielding the current Democrat president's vile son from a criminal probe. Well, that's not the FBI. The FBI's done their probe. Federal prosecutor David Weiss, who was a Trump appointee and has thus far declined to press charges for some reason. FBI's been all over trying to get those pictures of Hunter Biden snorting coke off of hookers' butts and looking at his big old wang hanging out there on Twitter. It's federal prosecutors that are holding that up. Not the FBI director. So, like, I think you got some wires crossed here. I've never understood the particular Republican obsession with old Hunter, but I think in your case, I might. We know how much you love a fit dude willing to do some blow. Ray is using his extremely powerful law enforcement role for political purposes. He must be impeached. Marge is using her very powerful governmental role to call for the impeachment of her political enemies. Do you not see, do you not? You don't, you don't see it, do you? Yesterday morning, I introduced articles of impeachment against Attorney General Merrick Garland. Get to the point. Under his control, it has become the Department of Injustice. A brief history lesson on attorneys general, Marge. We'll start with A. Mitchell Palmer. Of the Palmer raids fame served under Woodrow Wilson, rounded up thousands of American citizens suspected of being communists or socialists, violating their civil liberties, held them for months without trial. Harry Doherty under Harding and Coolidge indicted in the Teapot Dome scandal where some lands in Wyoming were illegally given to the Sinclair Oil Corporation. That guy was indicted twice and only got off because of DOJ deadlock. John Mitchell under Nixon, who, you know, helped plan the Watergate break-in, like he indicted on that one. You got William Barr and his first go around pushing for the pardon of Casper Weinberger from the whole Iran-Contra affair. You got John Ashcroft authorizing fucking torture. Alberto Gonzalez signing off on warrantless surveillance of American citizens and firing nine U.S. attorneys who refused to keep open back-channel White House prosecution of political enemies. Old jolly Jeff Sessions, who had to recuse himself from the Russia probe, replaced by Whitaker, who straight up declared himself in charge of the Mueller investigation. And then they brought old Billy Barr back around again, who shared his vision for a unified presidential authority and held that executive power was functionally unlimited. He also refused to testify in front of Congress several times and wouldn't hand over the entirety of the Mueller report. So don't talk to me about the Department of Injustice. It has always been this way, Marge. William Barr might have pushed for a citizenship test on the census, but I kind of want to push for a history test for our representatives. The politis politicization... Yeah, it's a tough word. It's pretty big. ...of the DOJ has resulted in the persecution of the left's political enemies and a two-tier justice system. Now listen, I know you can't be fucked to go look up all the names I just listed, but Woodrow Wilson was the only Democrat president on that list. All right? It's, it's only one. There's always been a two-tier justice system in this country. That's obvious to anyone with eyes. 100% the system is flawed, corrupt, and bad. But it isn't just the other side, Marge. It's your side as well. Could be argued that it's your side more. 
Garland is using the FBI as the personal police force for his boss, Joe Biden. Probably learned it from watching Barr and your boss, Donnie. Wilson and Mitchell, or, you know, see the last section of this video. Just rewatch that again. He has launched investigations into everyone from parents who protest their local school boards to former and future President Donald J. Trump. Hey, Marge, you got a little, little something orange on your nose there. Try it. It's just right there. No, no, you got it. Nothing short of election interference. I don't really think that's election interference. I think what election interference might be is storming the Capitol building in effort to stop actual votes being counted. You know, that might be election interference. Planting a pipe bomb with your water walk, that might be election interference. I don't think, you know, investigating the people who did that would be election interference. Like we're not even in an election year. Garland's total politicization and perversion of the American justice system has only one remedy, impeachment. Yesterday, I also introduced articles of impeachment against Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Blah, blah, blah. They're letting everybody in at the border. He's not doing his job. Do you realize that in all the people you've named so far, you have yet to cite a single crime being committed, not one. You've literally just named people who aren't doing the job you want them to do. Secretary Mayorkas must be impeached. No, we mustn't, but at least we can rely on our chosen representatives to vote strictly along party lines for every single issue here, you know? It's almost like two-party politics is a bad idea. It is with the highest amount of solemnity. 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 No, no, it's solemnity. 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 Moving on. That I announce my intention to introduce articles of impeachment today on the head of this America at Last executive branch. The President of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden. Here we go. Joe Biden has deliberately compromised our national security by refusing to enforce immigration laws and secure our border. Borders, plural, the being that there's two of them. Of course, for whatever reason, y'all are never worried about that northern border. It's always the southern border. There's got to be some explanation for that, like some easily recognizable difference between the people crossing the southern border and the people crossing the northern border. And I wonder, I wonder what it could be. And of course, we know the GOP is ramping up their rhetoric against Mexico now, what with the whole like nationalizing of the lithium situation. If there's one thing every politician can agree is un-American, it's the citizens of a nation profiting from the resources of that nation when American corporations would profit so much more from those same resources. Right. Allowed approximately 6 million illegals from over 170 countries to invade our country. With a record-setting number of arrests and still nowhere near the numbers from the mid to early 2000s. Who's president then? Deprive Border Patrol of the necessary resources and policies sufficient to protect our country. And his administration has willfully refused to maintain operational control as required by the law. He has allowed fentanyl, the number one killer of Americans between the age of 18 and 45. Now, Marge, this fact relies on the sort of creative bookkeeping that you claim the uh, COVID numbers are all about. You know, anybody who dies while having COVID is listed as a COVID death, you would have to do exactly the same thing with synthetic opioids, assuming that over 90% of them are fentanyl and that every single death was fentanyl only. Like this number that you're given is not backed up except by extremely cherry picking statistics to arrive at your preconceived notion to overwhelmingly flood into our country and kill around 300 Americans every 
single day. These are their sons, their daughters, their brothers, their sisters, their mothers, their fathers, their cousins, aunts, and uncles. Their sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles, nephews, former roommate. His administration has lost complete contact with approximately 85,000 unaccompanied illegal alien children. Who started that policy of separating migrant children from their parents, I wonder? Was it Biden or was it somebody else? And his policies have forced tens of thousands of illegal children into slave labor. Where are these kids? McDonald's? No one even knows. It's, hor it's horrible. Well, on this point, March, we do agree. It is horrible children being exploited like that. The bizarre thing is that last year, more than 835 American companies were fined for employing nearly 4,000 U.S. children illegally. Of course, I suppose Arkansas is taking brave progressive steps towards uh, fixing that problem by making child labor no longer illegal. Maybe you should stop focusing so hard on Mexican kids and worry about the kids right here in the U.S. You know, since it's the place where you wield political power and could actually take steps to improve things instead of just using the plight of foreign children as like a sort of vague cover for your seething racism and bigotry. Joe Biden has reinstated catastrophic and disastrous catch and release policies which have allowed illegals to flood, to flood our country and our communities. Try not to speak about immigrants using dehumanizing language, challenge level, Marjorie Gear Solid. He ended Remain in Mexico and reinstated catch and release. Under Biden's command, the Secretary of Homeland Security has illegally granted mass parole to aliens when U.S. federal law only permits parole to be granted on a specific case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, y'all remember that time Joe Biden gave amnesty to three million undocumented immigrants in the United States back in 86. Wait, that was Reagan. That was Reagan in 86, wasn't it? Or what about when creepy CIA spook HW increased the number of migrants that were allowed to enter the country every year? You got a problem with that? Or did you not even know that it happened? Or maybe you did know it happened, but you're fine with it because Republicans did it, not Biden. I've long maintained that when it comes to those two fellows' voting records, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between them. But only one of them has their picture pinned to Ben Shapiro's headboard, and it ain't Joe. He endangered the lives of Americans by allowing illegal aliens who had tested positive for COVID-19 to enter our country. Wait, so you think COVID's real now? And infect American citizens. With the virus, you said, wasn't a big deal. Yet, while enforcing strict COVID policies on American citizens. Policies which you were against. So should we have locked everybody up to make sure that the migrants crossing the border didn't spread it? Or should we have opened everything up because the virus wasn't real? You will literally just say anything, won't you? Like, just whatever words spring into that head of yours. Just fly them right out. His policies, directives, and statements surrounding the southern border have violated our laws and destroyed our country. I'm pretty sure I remember your once and future president, Donald Trump, saying that if the president does it, it's not illegal. So is that still your official stance or are you breaking ranks, hurting your chances of being picked for VP? Better hope he doesn't hear about this. Biden has blatantly violated his constitutional duty and he is a direct threat to our national security. Okay, we get it. Biden must be impeached. You know, I'm going to, I'm just going to stop. I've spent too much time and too much effort responding to and listening to and editing this video already. It's the project's gotten way out from underneath me. And frankly, I don't think anybody wants to watch a 20 plus minute video of me addressing your points. It's far longer than any serious person should devote to anything you have to say. Fortunately for you, I'm not a particularly serious person. Just some dipshit on the internet in the deep South. Sort of working class American whose interests you claim to have in your heart and 
to whom you show absolutely zero effort towards improving the life of. Focusing instead on trying to drum up some sort of hate inside me in hopes that I will agree to vote for you, which I won't. In closing, the last thing I want to talk about is your incredible lack of what the kids are calling Riz. Because you have the opposite of that. What Terry Pratchett referred to as charisma. I have spent days of my life now watching you stand at that podium and read from your pre-prepared statement like the kid that didn't do the research required on their persuasive essay paid somebody else five bucks to write it and is reading it for a grade for the very first time. The fact that you hold any kind of political office at all is wild to me. Reagan was an absolute monster, but he he could damn sure deliver a speech, you know? Even George W. Bush and, and Trump with all their foibles and missteps and allopropisms, they at least had an appeal. Even old bowling alley Bobert can get up there and put some emotion behind her words in an attempt to make people believe she means what she's saying. It's clear you don't want to be there. We don't want you there. Just, just go back to running your dad's construction business or sleeping with your trainers, whatever, whatever the family values it is you claim to endorse. Possessing the malignant narcissism that makes you think you should be in charge of everyone isn't enough to ensure political success. You don't have serious policy. You don't have a grasp of history. You don't have the ability to give a speech, Marge. We're supposed to be choosing the best amongst us to represent us in Washington and on the national stage. And if folks like you are all we've got, we're in a shitload of trouble.